so uh, today I thought I'd give you guys some uh, tips. So we'll start with this one. Chicken game is actually a pretty powerful card because it allows you to test for uh, responses and it, this card itself cannot be responded to and uh, your opponent won't get a draw because uh, you'll uh, activate zombie world and that'll make it impossible to respond well not respond impossible to draw because the card itself uh, cannot be responded to so you cannot ash a chicken game for example and if you run terraforming with zombie world then you open a copy of zombie world in your hand as well you can simply uh, add chicken game draw one and uh, you kind of remove terraforming and chicken game from your deck and uh, yeah. as well as this you'll draw a card making you go uh, completely even so you could draw into I don't know this would be uni zombie whatever and if your opponent ashes the terraforming that's fine their ash is gone now and you still have your uh, line of play which is uh, perfectly fine. This is uh, mostly for any deck that wants to run terraforming and and uh, another field spell though. I think that's where this really shines because uh, for example you could terraforming and have chicken game in hand and then just search zombie world, activate chicken game, get your draw, zombie world on top of chicken game and then uh, you also test for the response, right? Uh, you'll be able to probably see if your opponent might have an Ash or a Maxi. It depends on like uh, exactly what happens and when the response happens as well. So it's a bit situational there. Uh. If your opponent has only a response to chicken game though, it's probably something like uh, max C. And uh, the only case where you wouldn't be able to draw off of activating chicken game is if your opponent hits you with a ghost ogre. And Just because they have a response to like chicken game, it wouldn't mean like for example they don't have an ash, but it would allow you to check because there are only so many uh, cards that can respond to chicken game. For example though, if uh, your opponent had no response to chicken game, and then you normal summon a monster and they have a response, it's a uh, probable or they probably do have uh, Effect Veiler or Impermanence, so you can play around this stuff a little bit depending on what you're playing and what your hand is, but it's a bit situational. So, uh, about Chain On and Chain Off. Uh, if your opponent has a response to, for example, your Degda, in specific situations, Chain On and Chain Off will matter. And uh, also, uh, if you can summon Degda before Halk, you can make, like, Anapolosa as well during your combos, which is worth consideration. Like, in this line, I'd be able to do it. I'm not going to activate Degda. Uh, in this situation. So, it would have been better to, but to show the chains, I won't. So, I'm going to just make Hulk now, and that'll be good. I will call it a day there. So we're just going to set up this board. Alright. 
this is perfectly fine. Okay. So if I have chain set to auto, when you have chain set to auto, you can only respond to basically what your opponent does. And if you have it set to off, you won't uh, start any chains at all. Except for certain effects, it'll uh, ask you to resolve them. So we're just going to put Bella right here. Okay, so if we ch set uh, chains on though, everything your opponent does, you'll be able to respond to. Like when they set a monster right there, they uh, normally, if you have it set to, for example, auto, you wouldn't be able to respond to a monster or card being set. But since uh, we have chain on, we can. And if your opponent summons a monster, you can also chain to that. Basically, uh, just about any action you should be able to chain to. Unless it specifically says that you cannot chain or respond or something like that. But anyways. So, in uh, main 1, uh, in main phase 1, your opponent will get the first action if uh, you went first. And you'll probably, like, assuming you have... Uh, how decked a kind of situation. Your opponent uh, will get the first action, and typically you'll end up summoning like Ballad Rock or something, but that does not uh, trigger the Dagda. And they can technically chain to block your Dagda. So if you like uh, Hulk effect, your opponent activates max C, you can't activate Degda unless something else on the field activates. You just need to activate it in the same chain or uh, chain before Hulk to get this uh, effect off. But So for example, let's assume our opponent's uh, field is empty and they just play like uh, Desires or some kind of draw card and then we just chain Hulk. And then we chain uh, Degda. And let's assume for a second, like, you know what? I can, I can clear this board. So, let's assume the board is empty here, right? So if the board is empty like this, there are no monsters, or uh, yeah, mostly no monsters. That's important, I guess. So lightning storm, that that's something you could be a little concerned about, but Raigeki, nothing you can do about that anyways. So right here, when you do this chain, the you'll summon Wonder Magician, and Wonder Magician's effect will basically start a new chain. So, like, I'll demonstrate. So we're going to resolve this chain, and then in this situation right here. If our opponent, for example, played Desires as Chain 1, then uh, the board right now would be empty, meaning they can uh, use an Imperm or a Gamma here, for example. So, you could have played around that though, if you just simply waited for them with Chain on to perhaps summon a monster and then on resolution of their effect. You can instantly then go into uh, Wonder Magician from there and just sit on your Dagda a little bit. So we're just going to destroy Scythe here, bring back the Scythe. There's also this right here. You can just activate Wonder Magician effect, but like, let's assume in this case. Your opponent has, I don't know, Imperm for some reason and they want to hold it for a Scythe effect. So, if you chain Wonder Magician, right, well, you have no way of protecting your Scythe anymore. So if you instead just let your Scythe effect resolve and then use your Wonder Magician, that's something you can do as well. And then you can just go into Baron from there. And also, uh, you only get the draw from Formula Synchron if you are chain one so if you wait for your opponent's effect to resolve first 
and then go into uh, Alk Effect, and then into uh, Formula. Then uh, you would be able to get the draw from Formula Synchron. Like, let's assume we don't have Dagda and we just have a uh, Alk and maybe a Sucker or something like that. We can uh, just sit on the formula, and uh, whenever our opponent summons something we want banished, we can chain like uh, chain formula effect, chain ballard rock. That's also a thing we can do. But uh, yeah. That's kind of a bit of uh, advice on chaining from me, but if you want to wait for certain effects, for example, you had a back row, like Fog Blade. In my case, I'd probably have Fog Blade, and uh, my opponent activates Dark Ruler no more. I could uh, target something here and then chain a monster effect if I wanted. Well, I don't know what monster effect I have that would be useful, but assuming I did want to, I could do that, actually. Yeah. So, about the imperm situation, let's say, for example, at, in a main phase 1, our opponent is playing Sword Solo or something with 10 Yees, so they activate the Shooter effect. Which is, if you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. This is not actually an inherent summon, this is an effect. And, uh... So, let's say, chain one, this shoot at, okay? So if we chain Dagda, or not Dagda, if we chain Alk and then Dagda here, we can actually get our, uh, our, our artifact Dagda, uh, Impermed. And if our opponent tried to just in the start of main phase one, uh, imperm onto Dagda, then we simply chain Dagda on top of it, and it does not matter if they negate our Dagda here. And if they chain it onto Alk, Alk banishes itself anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So, in this case, we would wait for the Shooter's special summon to resolve, and then we would do our uh, Alk effect into the Degda, and that would play around Imperm. Assuming Imperm is in our opponent's hand, right? Then they would not be able to Imperm us here. But this play is not really available if you have it on a chain set to, if you have your uh, chain set to auto, because you would be able to only respond after like the Shuda effect. Because uh, Chain Auto only allows you to respond to, like, other effects. So they would be able to Vishuda special and then uh, summon the Monk, putting Vishuda in the graveyard and then using Vishuda's effect. And that would be when you are able to respond. But like I said with uh, Chain On, You'd be able to play around an Imperm in their hand, and you'd still be able to lock them out of being able to uh, summon the Monk, because on Vishuda special, since you have quick effects, right, your opponent would not be able to respond with uh, anything except for quick play spells. Or like uh, a ghost spell, I guess some kind of hand trap, something like that. They wouldn't be able to actually uh, special summon their monk to put the shooter in the graveyard as well. So you can play around that like that. And uh, let's see. Chain on and chain off are also uh, fairly useful. For for example, Banshee or uh, 
the phantom well not so much banshee because banshee is a quick effect but like for example silent boots if i have silent boots in the graveyard and you have let's say for example called by if you have it to chain uh, auto instead of chain on when I uh, banish Silent Boots for cost, you can't respond, so you'd have to activate this effect first. But Silent Boots, eh, in the chain, how the chain would work is like, uh, let's say for example, I use Cherubini to, well, let's say I use Foolish Burial to send uh, Silent Boots. So I send Silent Boots with Foolish Burial, and you have called by set. So you would have to uh, have chain set to on, and then you would uh, activate called by before I activate silent boots, because silent boots uh, banishes itself for cost. And uh, if you uh, activate called by in the next chain, silent boots is already banished, meaning it's no longer in the graveyard, meaning it's uh, no longer a valid target for called by. And, uh, that applies to some other cards as well, like, for example, if your opponent uses Fateful, and then searches, uh, Enchantress, and then discards Enchantress, if you have Chain set to Auto, uh, the Enchantress will just be banished at, for a uh, cost, and you would not be able to, uh, get rid of it. Or, for example, if you do have, like, Ballad Rock, I guess, in that case, it doesn't really matter as much for you, because... You could negate the effect, but let's assume you use the negate on something. Then you'd have to banish it when it hits the grave. Basically, uh, when something hits the grave and then is able to banish itself for cost, if you have chain set to auto, you're kind of clown. Long story short. So I'll uh, give you guys some uh, general deck building tips as well. So, for uh, starters, you want to run them at 3, obviously. So basically, for cards you run at 3, you just want to open them or have them in your opening hand. So, for example, I want to open Ash because max C, and it's generally just good and uh, can interrupt my opponent. And uh, Dark Ruffer, it's another combo piece that's really good for me as well. So I run this at 3 as well. And uh, Danger Nessie, this is a combo piece with Dark Ruffer, so I want to run these at 3 as well. So for cards at 2, generally they're just good cards. Like, for example, Called By, you would want to run Called By at 2. But, I mean, it's also in this case, it's a... Uh, semi-limited so not much you can do but run it at two like for example torn scales here i can only run that at two jackalope i can only run that at two as well so for uh cards at two they're generally uh either they're uh semi-limited necessary or good to have in general like doom king ballad rock i want two of those or for example uh even uh, Golden Lord, you might want them at two. Glow Bloom in some cases, Jack O'Bullen, if you're running Pure Zombies, I guess. For cards at one, uh, the typically cards that you uh, tech in or they're required for the combo, or the card is just limited, like on a Foolish Burial. So basically, cards like your your uh, it's Synchron, your uh, Glow Blooms, and your non pure zombie decks, your Scythe. These are your one ofs. But uh, how many one ofs you're running? It depends on the deck, I guess. Like Astral Kribo, it's just good for this deck because I can make. Uh, Dugaris, Galaxy Tomahawk, Bamboozling, Gossip Shadow. Pretty good. If you're thinking about uh, 
making a more uh, competitive type of list, you uh, probably want to start off with uh, just straight up putting in like uh, going second cards and stuff like uh, Max C, Ash Blossom, Rageki, Lightning Storm or whatever, and then you want to build your uh, combo and deck to be as uh, compact as and uh, effective as possible, like mostly one to two card combos probably. Well it kind of depends if you're playing a combo deck or a control deck, but in short you want to run your uh, cards you want to open at three. And then cards that would be good to have, but you don't necessarily, like, need to open. Like, for example, Rivalry is kind of like that. Like, Rivalry is good to have, but it's not necessary as much as, for example, Unizombie. Because if you don't have Unizombie in a, your pure zombie deck, you can't do the combo like at all, just ending on a single rivalry. That's not so hot. And uh, in terms of going second, you should consider what uh, you're using for your going second options as well. And uh, what you can do with the cards. In zombies specifically, you can discard an extra ash to summon Bolin. That's also... Uh, worth thinking about. Like, for example, you summon, uh, Selene. You can summon Selene in, uh, your deck, right? And then you can summon an effect bailer and go into access code. That's a thing to consider as well. There's some usages for, uh, hand traps like that as well, like, uh, Sai from Gear Gamma is actually usable as a, like, a Itelli target as well. As well as a Ghost Ogre. So, uh, this list here is kind of whack, but I learned one thing from this. Small Worlds is actually pretty damn good with, uh, zombies and, uh, danger. So, basically, danger zombies. Because, uh, with the dangers, you can banish pretty much any card and then go into Uni Zombie. Because, uh, for example, with, uh, Mizuki, say we have Mizuki in hand and we want to banish Mizuki for, uh, Uni Zombie, we can banish Mizuki first, banish, uh, Mothman, and then off of Mothman, we can add a uni zombie. So, the thing here, well, actually, we don't even have to just banish. Actually, no, we would not banish Mothman, would we? No, we would banish Mothman because Mothman only has level 4 in common with uh, Mizuki. But, like, from any dark monster, like, for example, Dark Ruffer into Danger Nessie, Distrito, Danger Nessie, whatever. So the thing about the danger cards is, uh, they actually have literally nothing in common with each other, aside from the fact that they're dark. There's nothing else they have in common, aside from being dark, making them pretty good small world targets. And they're already decent to have as like a special summon and maybe a draw, depending on how your deck functions, I guess. This might not be for every deck, but specifically for zombies, this is pretty useful. Like, uh, especially dark decks, I guess, would benefit the most from this. Because they serve as a good bridge, and they're actually pretty good in your hand as well, or a part of your combo. So, uh, Small World will only realistically ever minus one you, 
Because even if you ash uh, Small World, the whole thing is in effect. Or if they negate it, you'll only go minus one. And if they don't negate it, you'll get uh, whatever monster you want from your deck. You'll probably be able to add it. Because that's likely how you would have designed your deck if you were running uh, Small World. And uh, if they do ash it, uh, that's just their ash gone, and you can play without worry from ash anymore. Well, they might still have Nibiru or something like that, but it is what I uh, it is what it is, I guess. But there are definitely still plays you can have after uh, Nib, I guess. So for Small World, you just have to remember that all three monsters need only to have one thing in common and no more. So for example, we have Jet Synchron, Cyframe Driver, and let's say Unizombie. They have one thing in common. Their uh, defense is zero, so you could from either Cyframe Driver or Jet Synchron go into Uni Zombie assuming they aren't in your hand. Which is one thing you have to keep in mind, you would need uh, to banish a monster from your uh, deck. So if, for example, the target you were planning to use to go into Uni Zombie was a uh, Jet Synchron, you only have one Jet Synchron and it's in your hand, you can no longer banish Jet Synchron. So, like, for example, Danger Zombies is a really good deck in this case for uh, Small World. Because uh, with Small World, you can uh, just banish, like, an extra danger, and you're probably running them as a uh, 3 of anyways, or a 2 of. But most cases, uh, 3 of. <laughs> 